Good morning. Today's topic is about the diffuse external injury. Uh, the synonym to this terminology are shearing brain injury or otherwise an uh, external shear injury. The diffuse external injury is a condition representing a spectrum of severity in which the victim is in state of unconsciousness from the time of injury and either remains in state of coma or enters into a persistent vegetative state and here it is also on a clinical syndrome with a supporting neuroradiological changes in the axonal after a after sustaining a injury another terminology diffuse neural neuronal injury it is a function, functional abnormality of a nerve cell and their connections and when you come to causes same Traumatic causes remains the majority of the cases and either it could be of a case of a road traffic accident and more than of contributing future is of 90% and other causes either due to a fall or an act of an assault and most commonly it will be associated with a phase of concussion and other mechanism exact mechanism behind is of any trauma is, is any sudden rotational acceleration or the deceleration process can causes or can result in a disruption or tearing of an axon, myelin sheath or the blood capillaries and it can present with the, uh, these signs and symptoms. The patient may present with the alteration in mental state loss of memory or any sort of focal neurological deficit that or may not be a transient and when you talk about mechanism of diffuse accidental injury there are two such theories proposed one such as earlier mechanical theory and another is modern biochemical theory and the slide is about earlier mechanical theory an external damage was a, was a tearing due to a mechanical force during a trauma or aftermath of a trauma. Here anatomical variations in the brain layers and followed by their consistencies and uh, some parts may remain fixed and some parts may be loose away from the skull wall and those plus and relative motion of an portions of a brain also been a contributing factor for a shear strain and uh, for example a part may, may be relatively soft and when you com compare to one other part which is moderately or uh, harder in consistency they show different variation and uh, when and where a force applied they relatively move at a faster rate according to their fixation to the certain parts of a brain and some parts may not be fixed so they can move uh, at a relatively at a far faster pace when you compare to the relatively fixed structures and the same uh, force applied superficial portions of the part of a brain may react at some uh, not at they don't move at the same rate and same such applied to a uh, deep portions of the brain structures and uh, when ultimately this sort of a trauma occurs there will be a shear strain occurring and followed by there will be a it manifest as an axonal injury and if this force continues or this force of exertion continues on that from that uh, part particular region and ultimately it can lead to a, a rupture of a axonal sheath and uh, based on this anatomical variations and other when you compare to a white matter and a grey matter, there is a different consistency. At the matter of this, at this point of junction, there is a variance and their consistency vary. And when a force applied, there could be a most common site for an external damage can occur. And when you come to second such example, point number two, corpus callosum. Here it is, uh, it is attached to the flags. It means that it explains to the point number two. It has been relatively fixed to a certain part of the brain or to a 
rigid skull so if there have been a strain applied and it can go for an easy, easy external injury when compared to other regions slide number six it is about modern biochemical theory here the ions the, as the word suggests the word biochemical ions how does it favors any sort of an injury and when they receive an injury what are the variations occurring in these ions and how do they react to the trauma when an injury when a part has been stitched during an injury there have been a disruption of the axolema axolema is nothing but a, a part covering a axon and when there have been a disruption occurs and followed by sodium channels have been opened and this voltage change occurs where it means that there have been a voltage gradient which alters and finally it leads to opening opening of the calcium channels and ultimately calcium flows within the axon and whereby calcium is responsible and it activates for uh, activate phospholipase and a proteolytic enzyme and ultimately these enzymes contribute to damage over a mitochondria and the cytoskeleton of the axon and this damage continues there have been a separation of an axon and finally axons go to a stage of swelling up uh, swollen up and followed by acc accumulation of this protein called BAPP here it means that beta amyloid precursors are precursor protein has been accumulated within the axon and this state continues and finally it can result in a neuronal damage and finally it can cause a neuronal death based on the duration of unconscious level or, in, or the state of coma diffuse axonal injury can be divided or categorized into three one is mild moderate and severe if a coma lasts for greater than last for 6 to 24 hours then it is of mild if the coma duration is greater than 24 hours without any brainstem dysfunction then it is of moderate diffuse external injury even if the coma lasts greater than 24 hours with the signs of dysfunction then it is of a severe diffuse external injury and when you talk about mild diffuse external injury usually the individual may suffer from a brief loss of consciousness and good neurological status without any subsequent deterioration of the signs and symptoms and most commonly individual may suffer from a state of headache dizziness nausea vomiting and uh, there may be some uh, some may show presence of insomnia and some may present with a mental irritability and most commonly it is of a subjective variation and uh, here the factors like the causality weapon or the moment or the velocity by which he has been uh, he has received an insult also been a contributing factors and the age also been a criteria and uh, an individual may suffer from a and in later part of the stage he may suffer from a memory problems in form of a, he can't record he can't recollect his past or the accident and uh, even in some cases the individual may suffer from extreme degrees of amnesia and uh, and also they suffer from a neuropsychological deficits and uh, coming to features of diffuse axonal injury uh, the classical features of diffuse axonal injury here the focal lesion in a corpus callosum and other midline structures will be present and point number two focal lesions one or both dorsolateral sectors of an rostral part of an brain stem may show a lesion and the third is it is of an microscopic evidence numerous axonal swellings axonal bulbs can be seen and in fatal head injury greater or lesser axonal injury is almost been found means that even these signs may or may not be present but axonal swellings and axonal bulk changes always found so these are the classical and again it is by microscopic evidence not of a morphological not by, not directed by a morphological examination or on a naked eye 
so in number nine it is about a uh, top three and uh, for example there have been three graders there have been three grades mild moderate and severe diffuse axonal injury here if an individual suffers a mild diffuse axonal injury they they won't be any consistent post-mortem findings and ultimately it can lead to a obscure autopsy or otherwise a negative autopsy and according to the food supplied or force received the individual may show potential hemorrhages in junctions of cortex or in the junctions of gray matter and white matter in the roof of both ventricle and the layer of bio matter or on the upper segment of the brain stem again may be, it means that may be found now based on the severity of the diffuse axonal injury and in some cases it may show diffuse edema focus of myelin de degeneration may also be found again the orders may be found right and uh, coming to severe diffuse axonal injury here the hearing is of axon is classically seen and the potential hemorrhages and focal hemorrhage spots can be seen over carpal callosum at the junction of white matter and the gray matter and the part of a brain stem and uh, here it is of severe diffuse axonal injury in mild diffuse axonal injury there won't be any consistent postmortem findings and the moderate will be in the middle it may show features of spotted hemorrhages when you compare to mild moderate may have a no sort of hemorrhagic patches and followed by axonal changes if a microscopical examination uh, if a brain matter or suspected site has been subjected for histopathological examination if the gap between the incident and the collection of sample is less than 12 hours there won't be any evident changes or consistent finding in a microscopic examination if a time lapse more than 12 hours there will be presence of retraction boards and if this presence indicates transected axons during it due to a injury and retraction balls on first they appear as a dilator then they become a club shape and finally they attain a round ball like structure and if the individual continues the treatment and he has been hospitalized and uh, the retraction balls they begin to decrease and usually it occurs two to three weeks after sustaining an injury and clusters of invasion of microglial cells appears and followed by astrocytosis and demyelination process occurs. Medical importance of diffuse axonal injury here victim may exhibit automatism. It means that the word automatism is nothing but a referring to a behavior pattern observed by an individual who has sustained a diffuse axonal injury or suffering from a post, -con post concussion traumatic event. Here the individual will be in a state of unconsciousness and unaware and whatever act he has performed even he can't recollect after a some time because he is associated with an am amnesia and other issues and uh, sometimes patient may speak and act in a purposive manner and uh, he can't recollect them after a uh, afterwards and uh, during in time even because he can't recollect right even he can be violent or even he may commit a criminal act and he is responsible for those offenses when he is committed during this transition phase and uh, in some cases complete recovery also possible and usually it can occur in less than 10 days after uh, hospitalization and other treatment thank you